Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy, dressed as prospectors, are tramping across the great Martian desert toward Polidor's hideout. We're getting closer. That must be the hideout right over that dune. Yeah, we can't expect to sneak up and surprise him. The best we can hope for is that we can get close before he recognizes us. Uh-oh. I see him, Hap. He sees us. Just keep walking. I can't tell whether it's Polidor or not, but he's got a gun. Halt! What do you want? Our car is back in the desert about two miles. That's too bad. But you won't need it anymore. Look out, Happy. He's got a blast gun. <laughs> we'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure... Trial by Terror. <laughs> Gang, here's a scene I like to see in every space patroller's kitchen when I tune in my view scope at breakfast time. It looks something like this. A big bowl on the table, a spoon, and next to the bowl and spoon, a red and white checkerboard package of rice checks. Then into the bowl goes the rice checks. Then cream and sugar, and sometimes fresh fruit. And now it's time to dig in. And man, oh man, oh man, digging into that bowl of rice checks is just like digging into a bowl full of sunshine. Golden shredded rice biscuits, triple oven toasted, till they're crisp as a cookie and three times as tasty. Tops for taste, you bet. Tops for size, too. Made in that modern bite-sized design for slick and easy eating. And rice checks is tops for get up and go. After a good nourishing breakfast with rice checks, you're full of the same super-powered get-up-and-go that Commander Corey starts off his day with. So, Space Patrollers, the next time I tune in my viewscope at breakfast time, I want to see you eating rice checks. And if you're a whole wheat fan, try wheat checks. Remember, checks are tops three ways for taste, size, and get-up-and-go. In the red and white checkerboard packages, with the big full-color picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside, and the wonderful free Space Patrol trading card on the inside. Rice checks, wheat checks. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, Trial by Terror. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are maintaining an all-night vigil in room 27 of the Space Patrol security lab. Room 27 houses an array of electronics equipment known officially as the Terra Internal Protective Alarm Coordinator, but usually referred to as the Crime Trap. The complex device is connected to hundreds of key points on the man-made planet Terra, banks, government offices, and laboratories. Its sensitive detection instruments are ready to report any attempt at forced entry, unusual movement, or outbreak of fire at any of these crucial locations. For hours now, the row of viewscope screens have remained dark. Unbroken rows of small green lights indicate the system is in operation in all circuits. Bored by the uneventful hours of waiting, Happy stands up and stretches. <sighs> uh, it looks like that tip on Polidor was false, sir. Unless he managed to break into the vault without setting off an alarm. Not even he could do that. The vault at Triplanet Construction Company is equipped with nearly every known detection device. Mm. Polidor must know that. Yes, and there's a good chance he also knows that there are two million credits in the vault. That's a tempting haul. He's sure running an awful risk. His men are. You can be sure that Polidor himself is playing it safe. Sir, would it be all right if I skipped down to the commissary for another glass of milk? Oh, wait till Lieutenant Cowling gets back, huh? Yes, sir. Well, I sure wouldn't want his job. Imagine having to watch these panels six hours a day and nothing ever happens. Uh-oh, I spoke too soon. Check the panel hat. Hey, it looks like that tip was on the level after all. Now, wait a minute. That alarm isn't from the Triplanet vault. Their light's still green. What's the number under the red light? 49, sir. 49. That's Universal Map and Chart Company. Polidor's mob wouldn't be pulling that job. Hey, Lieutenant Callum, we'll let the local... Perhaps something's wrong with the time trap. Hey, there must be a short circuit. Smoke's just pouring out of the panel. Smoke and rockets, the central panel blew up. Every circuit's dead. Wow, with the alarm system out, every bank on Terra could be robbed. Now get Lieutenant Callum. I'll space upon our patrol cars to close in on Triplanet and the map company. Less than a mile from Space Patrol headquarters, a small surface truck pulls up to the rear of the Zenith Microfilm Laboratory building. A man leaps from the truck, grabs a large case, and enters the building. Then, taking a heavy metal bar, he scrapes it across the floor. A section of the flooring swings upward, 
held against the metal bar by the pull of a magnet on the underside of the trap door. Placing the case down in the opening, the man closes the trap door and walks to a spaceophone transmitter. Bram Slazer at Station 5 Terra calling Polidor. Bram Slazer calling Polidor. Polidor here. Go ahead, Slazer. Arnig and I got the credits. Excellent. Any trouble? Not in the Triplanet Vault, but we were nearly stopped by a space patrol surface car during the getaway. There were patrol cars all around the Triplanet building. Mm, there may have been some sort of leak, but we won't worry about that now. Did you got the two million credits? When do Harning and I blast off? Both of you remain on Terra until further orders. Lie low for a couple of days. Yeah, but Polidor, the original agreement was that we were to deliver the credits to you right away and get paid off. You'll be running a risk if you try to take that money off of Terra now. In a day or two, I will provide a, well, a distraction. What do you mean, distraction? Something will happen to one of the big cities on Mars. A disaster so terrible that Corey will forget all about those two million credits. Now, yeah, what's going to happen? I want it to be a surprise. You and Harnong stay on Terra. And keep out of trouble. Holy it around. Boz and Happy have just returned to the commander's central office at Space Patrol headquarters after examining the vault at the Triplanet Construction Company building. Wow. Two million credits gone. And not a single clue. Polidor did it again? He got away with a the theft, but we'll have some clues when he tries to put that money in the circulation. What do you mean, sir? Checking the serial numbers? Yeah, that'd be difficult. The money was in fairly small bills. But they're impregnated with radioactive carbon particles. Within a few hours, every bank in the solar system will be supplied with radiation detectors. Oh. Then when anyone passes any of that money across the counter, he'll be nabbed. No. A space patrol agent will be put on his trail. The person actually passing the money might be entirely innocent. Take a lot of quiet investigation. But eventually, we'll trace the money back to its original source. To one of Polidor's men. That could take weeks. Maybe months. Unless Polidor's short of operating cash. If we could only find out who tipped us off. The lab experts had examined the damage of the crime trap in room 27. Somehow, one of Polidor's men bridged a small explosive device across one of the circuits in the main control. Well, right here in headquarters. The attempt to break into the map company had just one purpose. To set off an alarm in the coordinator system. And that triggered the explosive that blew out the master control. And prevented the alarm in the triplanet vault from registering. Right. Polidor had both jobs timed to the split second. Well, the biggest mystery right now is who tampered with the control panel in room 27. Mm, that part isn't a mystery, Hap. One of the maintenance men was in there yesterday. He didn't show up for duty today, and he can't be located. If we could only find him and give him a brainograph oh, test. That wouldn't help much. You know how Polidor works. His men know only their own phase of the job, nothing about anything higher up. Now get it, Hap. Corey here. Commander, this is Special Agent Parker. Some of that triplanet money is already in circulation. Uh, interesting. Polidor is trying to unload it fast, huh? Yeah, tell her at the Terra Bank was handed a hundred credit note. It was as radioactive as Madame Curie's floor mop. Have you traced the bill? Uh, the teller told me that it was passed by a fellow that works for Zenith Microfilm Lab. His name's Harnung. Want me to follow up on it, Commander? Find out all you can about the Microfilm Lab, but indirectly. Check on their employees, who owns it, and who their clients are. Yes, sir. Where is this outfit? 467 Orion. Oh, keep working undercover, Parker. I'll check on Harnung. Corey out. Say, this Zenith outfit is really sharp. Look at their sign. An elephant never forgets. Neither does Zenith microfilm. And it takes less space. Clever. <laughs> and below it, our clients are protected by Tipac. Hey, they're closed. Hmm. There's a light on inside. Somebody's coming. Now, keep that radiation detector out of sight. While I'm talking to this fellow, you wander around the plant. A little private snooping, huh? Yeah, make it obvious, youthful curiosity. Walk close to their files, but be interested in their lab equipment. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, we're... No, oh, uh, I was about to say we're closed for business, but of course that doesn't apply to the space patrol. I'm looking for Mr. Harnung. Oh, I'm Harnung. What can I do for you? I'd like to ask you a few routine questions inside, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course, come in, gentlemen. Uh, sit down. I was just checking through some orders. Got a few rush shipments I want to get out tonight. I'll go right ahead. We can talk as you work. Thank you. Hey, you've sure got a lot of swell equipment here. You better not touch anything, Happy. You might upset some delicate adjustments. Yes, sir. No, he, he can't have heard anything. Now, uh, what was it, Commander? You visited the Terra Bank this morning, is that right? Uh, yeah. On some business for the firm. You gave the teller a hundred credit note. Don't tell me it wasn't any good. No, it was good, all right. I'd... Just like to know where you got it. I'm afraid I can't tell you, Commander. 
You mean you get so many hundred credit bills you can't remember? <laughs> I wish that were true. No, what I mean is I wasn't in the office when the bill came in. Uh, perhaps Mr. Ogilby could help you. He's our bookkeeper. Uh, I could tell you where he lives. Oh, and... fine. You can give me his address later. Say, is it all right if I if I go back here? Huh? Oh, the processing lab? Yeah, of course. Make yourself at home. Now, don't disturb anything, Happy. All right, Commander. Now, Mr. Hanong, when would this hundred credit bill have come in? Well, I don't know. Possibly late yesterday. This morning, our petty cash was low, so I took the bill to the bank to get it changed. As I say, if you go and talk to Ogilvy... I'll do that. I noticed you're protected by Terra Internal Alarm Coordinator Service. Do you often have material here that would tempt burglars? Well, Commander, frankly, we don't need the service, but it looks good on our advertising. You and I know that no burglar is going to waste his time and run the risk of breaking into a place like this. Excuse me, Commander. Yes, Happy? Uh, something very interesting back in the lab. Oh? Well, uh, things are really clicking. Hanung, before you give me your bookkeeper's address, I'd uh, like to see the rest of your plant. Uh, yeah, of course. Now, over here's our, uh, our display room where we show the plant samples. Of I'd them. like to see the lab first. There's something radioactive under the floor of the lab, sir. Okay. Uh, come on, Hanung. I'm sure we'll need your explanation of some of the lab equipment. That's just like any commercial microfilm lab, Commander. Nothing you gentlemen wouldn't understand. Yeah, you never can tell. There are tricks to every trade. Here's the spot, Commander. Listen to the detector. Now watch what happens when I put it down on the floor. What's under this flooring, Harnum? Uh, I don't know. If you look close, Commander, you can make out very fine cracks in the floor in the form of a square, like a closely fitted trap door. Yes, I see. Open it up, Harnum. Look, I, I don't know what you're talking about. By the way, a detector's clicking. I'd say there's about two million credits worth of radioactivity under this floor. If I can find something sharp, maybe I can pry it open, sir. Oh, I know, that, that metal bar. Uh, hey, that's funny. It was right over here under the window, on top of a packing case. It looked like a crowbar. Yeah, but where did it go? Here it is. Can it? Oh. I got Corey. Hold him. No, you don't, Harno. Oh. Nice going, Slazer. You couldn't wait to dip into that two million credits. How about Slazer? We were broke. How did I know? Shut load? up. Take this bar and open the trap door. While you're loading the money in the surface car, I'll make sure that Corey and the cadet are out of the way for good. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Dick Tufeld in St. Louis reporting on the twin jet Air Force fighter, the McDonnell Voodoo XF-88A. In a moment, we'll hear from the noted test pilot who flies this plane, Phil Houghton. Speed of the Voodoo is a military secret, but it's plenty fast. Wingspan is 40 feet, length 55, weight 10 tons. And now, Phil Houghton recorded at Lambert Airfield. After seeing the voodoo, I guess you know why I like my job. There's one thing about it, though. A test pilot has to stay in good condition, get lots of sleep, and eat good, healthy food. That's why I like rice checks and wheat checks for breakfast. They've got plenty of energy in them, and they really taste swell. I think you'll like them, too. Make sure you stay in condition the way Phil Houghton, J. Ray Donahue, Jr., and other top test pilots do. Every morning, eat a good, nourishing breakfast with Rice Chex or Wheat Chex, the cereals that are tops three ways. Tops for taste, for size, and for real get-up-and-go. That's Chex, rice or wheat. Remember, they're tops with America's top pilots. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, Trial by Terror. Using a radiation detector, Buzz and Happy have discovered the hiding place of two million stolen credits in a microfilm laboratory used as a front by two members of Polidor's gang. While the space patrollers were busy with Harnung, the other criminal Slazer emerged from hiding and knocked out the commander and Happy before they could defend themselves. Right now, while Harnung removes the stolen money to a surface car, Slazer grips a metal bar as Buzz dazedly raises his head. Don't try to get up, Corey. I can make it quick and painless for you and the cadet if you don't try to put up a fight. How much is Polidor giving you out of that two million credits? Now, what makes you think we're working for Polidor? I've got the money in the car. What's taking hey, you... quiet, you fool. Don't stand in the door bellowing. Now, what is it? Have you finished them yet? Have a quick I'll push against this stack of cases. Yes, sir. Get out of here. When they sure. fall, they may break it's that sure window. It's a thorough job. With this much They're rocking, sir. The <laughs> that that does it? Hey! Hey, what good do you think that's going to do you? window opens into the alley and it's deserted. I realize that. I just stole it. 
Get to work with that bar, Slazy. Uh, just a moment. I believe this plant's protected by Terra Internal Alarm Service. What about it? Oh, nothing. Except that in room 27 at Terra Headquarters, a red light's flashing. In a few seconds, every patrol car in the district will be heading this way. Slazer, he's right. Let's get out of here, quick. Corey's bluffing. The master panel's out of commission. We've got auxiliary units, you know. But of course, it's up to you. Polidor will be mighty grateful to you for getting rid of us at the cost of your own freedom. Slazer, come on. It would only take a second. Every second counts. Throw that bar down and let's go. All right. But there's one thing I'm going to do first. Smash this space of fault. That's enough. Come on. Let's go. We'll lock him in. Oh, oh that was close. Yeah, I'll give you a hand, Hap. Oh, my head. Oh. Hey, I didn't know that master alarm panel was replaced so quickly. I'm surprised. If it's working, I'm surprised. Oh, this laser sure put that space of out of order. I'll check the dials. Maybe I can find out what frequencies they've been using. Hap, get that bar and pry open the door. Weakened and dazed by their treatment at the hands of Slazer and Harnung, it's several minutes before Buzz and Happy can wrench open the locked door of the microfilm lab. Hailing a patrol car, Buzz spacephones an alert to the Terra spaceport. Then he and Happy speed to headquarters to supervise the hunt for Slazer and Harnung. Right now, as Happy enters the commander's office after an errand to the security lab, Buzz adjusts a spacephone receiver. The alarm coordinator panel is working now, Commander. Gee, if they'd only finished it a few minutes sooner, our alarm from the microfilm lab would have gone through. Now, we've had a couple of good breaks, though, Hap. Three of Bolinor's chief agents have been picked up. Two in Saturn City and one on Mercury. Great. When we give him a brainograph test, maybe we can find out where Polidor is. I know where he is. What? I've been monitoring the frequencies I found jotted down by Harnung and Slazer at the microfilm lab. I intercepted a call from Polidor, and communication's got a fix on it. Well, where is he? On Mars. Approximately in the center of Sector K-7 on the Great Martian Desert. Well, then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Polidor your calling Station 7 Mercury. Polidor calling Station 7 Mercury. Station 7, I assume you are listening but cannot acknowledge. Disaster Plan C is now in effect. Repeat, Disaster Plan C is now in effect. Suspend operations until after Space Patrol sounds strip or red. At approximately 1,500 hours, Polidor out. What's he talking about? Triple red is our... Commander... Triple red is our code for an Mars emergency. Exactly. We'd better notify Mars Space Patrol where Polidor is. Hey, no, Hap. Getting Polidor might be simple, but it wouldn't necessarily stop this disaster plan C of his. It sounds as though he's getting desperate. Right. Got to take him by surprise. He expects us to sound a triple red at about 1,500 hours. That would give us time to get to Mars, maybe with two hours to spare. We'll need that time, Hap. Hundreds of lives, maybe thousands, depend on how we use those two hours. In a skillfully camouflaged building in the great Martian desert... The master criminal Polidor counts through several huge stacks of credits, then glowers at the two men who sit silently in a corner. You're 100 credits short of two million. I, I explained that, Polidor. I, I needed money for expenses. So... so you trotted right down to the Terra Bank with a radioactive 100 credit bill. I ought to cut your share in half. But, Polidor, now we know those, those bills are radioactive. Otherwise, you might have circulated some yourself and got caught. You have to admit it's right, Polidor. What good is this money if we can't pass it? That is an awful. And maybe we can neutralize the radiation. Yeah, that's true. Right now, I have something more urgent to think about. The destruction of Lowell City. What? Lowell City? Disaster Plan C, remember? Well, what do we gain by that? With a city in ruins, who is going to battle about you or me? The Space Patrol will have its hands full. How are you going to do it? It will be simple. Right now on Damus, the outer moon of Mars is a robot spaceship full of high explosives. I can control it from here, cause it to blast off and set it on a vector that will send it crashing into Lowell City. Isn't there some other way to save our skins, destroying a whole city? If you think of a method as effective, I'll consider it. In the meantime, follow orders. No one must interfere with my plan to destroy Lower City. Naturally, no ships can approach without warning. But an attack by land is another matter. What are you worried about? This place is like a fort. Yes, and forts have been known to fall even to a few men on foot. You two are going on patrol right now. After a swift flight to Mars, Buzz and Happy set their spaceship down in the great Martian desert, miles from Polidor's hideout. Dressed as prospectors, they cover more miles in a battered desert-going surface car. Now, their faces and hands grimy with grease and dirt to hide their identity, they trudge onward through the cold Martian twilight. Perhaps slow down. Let your shoulders slump. You'd be spotted as a space patroller from a mile away. We're getting closer. That must be the hideout right over that dune. Yeah. We can't expect to sneak up and surprise Polidor. The best we can hope for is to get close to him before he recognizes us. Uh-oh. Look. I see him, Hap. 
He sees us. Just keep walking. What light there is is behind him. I can't tell whether it's Polidor or not. But he's got a gun. Halt! What do you want? Our car is back in the desert about two miles. That's too bad. But you won't need it anymore. Drop happy. He's got a blast gun. I missed you on purpose. But if either of you makes a move, I'll let you have it. It's Slazer. Let him do all the talking. Well, well, well. On your feet, men, and keep your hands up. That's it. I'll just take your weapons. Thanks, Commander. Now yours, Cadet. You know, Polidor will be glad to see you. And I can finish what I started back on Terra. Now get moving. these men? Just a couple of prospectors. Prospecting for trouble. Oh. Corey and the cadet. You're just in time to watch the destruction of Lowell City. Lowell City? So that's what you meant by disaster plan C. Oh. So you intercepted one of my space phone messages. Yes, Commander. A few minutes ago, I launched a robot spaceship from the outer moon. At 1,500 hours, it will crash into the heart of Lowell City. It is now 1455. Polidor, what can you possibly gain by a thing like that? I'm a hunted man, Commander. Even with you out of the way, your hounds of the law will be hot on my scent. Well, do you think wrecking a city will make them stop hunting you? No. But it will give me a breathing spell while the space patrol is evacuating the injured, caring for the homeless. Why, you in Careful, Commander. Slazer, cut on the view scope. Uh, the large screen, if you will. Thank you. There. What you see there is the planet Mars as it looks from the nose port of a robot ship. Each second brings it closer to its target. You've forgotten about space control. They'll detect it. No, cadet. In a moment, I will step into the next room where the control mechanism is. And at the proper time, I will change vector. Space control defenses will have no time to act. Polidor, think of the helpless women and children in that city. It is nearly time to change vector. Watch the screen, gentlemen. You will see Lowell City move from the right edge to the exact center. It will grow larger and larger. And when the screen goes blank... Stop him! Stop Corey! Corey, come out of there! Open this door! Laser, you and Harnung keep an eye on the cadet. Sure we will. Don't move, cadet. Harnung, cut on the intercom so Corey can hear me. Okay. Look at the screen. Corey's changing the course of the robot ship. Hurry, Commander, you did it. You saved Lowell City. Save your cheers, cadet. Commander, can you hear me? Yes, Polidor, I hear you. Open this door. If I have to break it down, I'll come in there with a blast gun. Come ahead. Now I've got a blast gun, too. Now, what are you waiting for? You're three to one against me. Harnung, Snazer, one of you go and get him. You go in, Polidor, it's your idea. You cowards. I'll fix him. Corey, you forget that we got the cadet out here. If you want to see him alive, surrender. Come out with your hands up and empty. Smart thinking, Polidor. That'll get him. How about it, Corey? Are you coming out, or do we shoot the cadet? Don't let him bluff you, Commander. After he wrecks the city, he'll get us anyway. Now, isn't the cadet hero? Shut up, all of you. Well, Corey, I'm counting to ten. While you're counting, look at the viewscope screen. What do you see? You're heading the robot toward Mars. That's right. Straight toward the center of Sector K-7. That's where we are. Corey, are you crazy? You blow us all up. We gotta get in there and stop him. Change that control. Now, listen, all of you. If I hear a shot, I'm gonna smash this robot control. Nothing you can do will prevent that ship full of explosives from crashing. Polidor, look at the screen. It's getting close. Let's get out of here. You plan to destroy a city. That means you can't run far enough or fast enough to avoid that explosion. Corey, listen to reason. Stop that thing. Change its course. Not until you give Happy your weapons. Listen. It's getting close. Polidor, give up. Don't be fools. We got two million credits here and Corey's bluffing. He won't dare let the ship crash here. Oh, no. It's right above us. Polidor, give up. Yes, Polidor, surrender. I'll shoot you. No. No, don't. You heard what Corey said. If he hears a shot, he'll smash the controls. All right, Corey, we'll surrender. Hey, could I take our guns? Quick, please, just drop them. How's it going out there, Hap? I've got him covered, Commander. Hurry, please. Change uh, back, sir. You may uh, get up off your knees now, gentlemen. Well, I see everything's under control, huh? Yes, sir. 
Except Polidor and his pals are nearly passed out from fright. It's a shame, in a way. I know what you mean, Hap. I'd hope that... Hey, Polidor's going for a gun! Oh, no, he's not. (laughs) Thanks, Polidor. I've been wanting to get that out of my system for a long time. It's over. It's all over. Good thinking. Polidor doesn't need a spaceship to fall on him. Or does he? (laughs) An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Say, Space Patrollers, Commander Corey's been getting a lot of fan letters lately. Got a couple of them right here. And man, oh man, you should hear all the wonderful things Space Patrollers are saying about checks. Listen, I'll quote you a few. Love those checks. Best tasting cereals of all. And taste real George with fruit. Super swell with milk and sugar. Here's another good one. I like checks because they're bite sized. Take along a pocket full most every place I go. There you have it, gang. And that's just a few. But I know that you'll all like checks. They're the tops in cereals. Tops three ways. For taste. Size and get up and go. Right, Captain Tufeld. Commander Corey here, Space Patrollers. Now, I want all of you to be Rice Checks, Wheat Check fans like I am. So try them. Have yourself a good, nourishing breakfast with Checks. And I'm sure you'll agree, Checks are tops in cereals. Gang, you heard what the commander said, and he's the number one Checks fan. So go get them today. In the red and white checkerboard packages, with the picture of the commander or Cadet Happy on the outside, and the wonderful free Space Patrol trading card inside. Rice checks, wheat checks, tops three ways, for taste, for size, for get up and go. Now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are trying to escape from a mysterious underworld kingdom on Mercury. Suddenly, a robed figure steps before them. Commander, it's Varg. There is no use resisting. You will never leave this underground city. What's going to stop us? The sun. The precious sunlight you surface dwellers prize so much. It is pouring down into the shafts beneath you. What's he talking about, Commander? The sun's heat here in Mercury is terrific. If it suddenly expands those pockets of frozen air, it'll blast these caverns wide open. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, Menace Under Mercury, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Baylor Kovach, Norman Jolly, and Ken Mayer. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks present exciting action on Space Patrol! This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the armed forces.